Tom's right. If I had to do all over again, guys, I'd get him snipped. The easiest way to get laid by a chick is to completely ignore her and be an a-hole and be a jerk. Anybody who doesn't believe you about separate accounts and give up on the nagging, they got to listen. 21 years old, Tom. I'm listening to you for about six years. Been following your rules, and uh, it's done me well. Anybody who followed my advice is in your position, Jesse. They're all doing great. It's unbelievable. You're like an angel, Tom. Very rarely do I agree with you, but I'm still a staunch listener. And I'm the kind of guy that has the same ATM receipt that you do that comes out of the machine. And today you're spot on, and you know your business, and you know what's going on. And I'll tell you what, this is great listening. We have a never, another topic every hour on this book. Oh, well, great. You're just like school. You go through everything so quickly. Bop, 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 well, bop, bop. you know what? This is a radio show. It well, has a little faster pace, Grandma, than you're used to. Oh, really? That's well, right. unfortunately, you know, your brain is so scattered, it's hard to keep up with this. Well, you know? Darling, and nobody okay. puts a gun to your head to listen in. You know, you've always got nice old KABC over there you can be listening to, or KFI. Plenty of people your age tune in, very satisfied with what they're getting. Well, you don't want to talk to me? You should be tuning in to a, a show that's for people your age. Well, you are such a son of a bitch. You're 110% correct from A to Z. Okay, from marriage to kids to, uh, you know, what one individual wants out of life. And if anyone wants a happy life, you don't necessarily need to get married to be happy with a woman. The bottom line is, you know, what do you bring to the table? If you're happy within yourself, you don't need anyone to make you happy. And I can guarantee you, a woman's not going to make you happy. And if you're look, any men out there who are looking for that, you're looking down the wrong path and a path to a straight dead end. So I want to thank you again, Tom. Kevin, what did you want to say to Michael? Michael. Yes. Where do you live? I want to come over and kick your ass. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Listen to everything that's coming out here. You are... You, you uh, there, there's, there's no word to describe you. You are stupider than stupid. You are the biggest idiot that I've ever heard, ever that's called into this show. You know who Democrats are? They're the ones whose TVs are going to stop working in February 2009 because they need to get the digital converter box. Bye, bye. Am I right? It's true. It's true. And they'll be, you, you want to know something? They'll be too much of a loser to get up off the couch and go down and get the coupon to get the box. Right. That, when I think of Democrats, that's what I think of. I don't have to be politically correct about this. Sarah Palin is a moron. She's a blithering idiot. You've been waiting for somebody to say it. I'm saying it right now. She's an idiot. She's an idiot. She doesn't read. She has no curiosity about the world. No intellectual curiosity at all. She's a complete blithering boob or pair of boobs. She's a moron. Absolutely. Sarah Palin's an idiot. Somebody has to say it. She's a bleeding moron. Is there anything about Sarah Palin that you did like, and if so, what is it, and yes. what's your least well, favorite yes, thing about yes. it? Yes, she does have two outstanding qualities, and they're each about six inches below her chin. <laughs> uh, you got it, you got it right. To her point that being next to Russian, and when, whenever the Russians fly in, they fly in Alaskan airspace, so that makes her an expert on foreign policy. I was going to say, you know what, I must be an expert on Japanese policy, because whenever they fly into the United States, they come right over California. I'm an expert. I'm an expert on Mexico. You know why? I got a housekeeper. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. My housekeeper's from Honduras. I'm an expert on Honduras. What other Supreme Court decisions do you disagree with? Hmm. Well, let's see. There's, of course, in, in the great history of America, there have been rulings that um, there's never going to be absolute consensus by every American and um, there are those issues again like Roe v. Wade where I believe are best held on a state level and addressed there so um, you know going through the history of America there there would be others but um, can you think of any well I, I would think of of any again that could best be dealt with on a more local level maybe I would take issue with but um, you know, as as a mayor and then as a governor and even as a vice president, if I'm so privileged to serve, wouldn't be in a position of changing those things, but in supporting the law of the land as it as it reads today. You've said, quote, John McCain will reform the way Wall Street does business. Other than supporting stricter regulations of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac two years ago, can you give us any more examples of his leading the charge 
for more oversight? I think that the example that you just cited with his warnings two years ago about Fannie and Freddie, that that's paramount. That's more than a heck of a lot of other senators and representatives did for us. But he's been in Congress for 26 years. He's been chairman of the Powerful Commerce Committee, and he is almost always cited with less regulation, not more. He's also known as the Maverick, though, taking shots from his own party and certainly taking shots from the other party, trying to get people to understand what he's been talking about, the need to reform government. I'm just going to ask you one more time not to belabor the point. Specific examples in his 26 years of pushing for more regulation. I'll try to find you some and I'll bring them to you. The babes are hot, but the winners are a killer She knows lots of politics, that's for sure Her religion, police, virginity are pure She eats red meat, cow, veal, or moose You know that goodness juices are the moose Stiletto heels, giving off the land Pit bull and lipstick, shotgun in hand Place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likey Show. That's part of my day. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likes. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likes Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. 
We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Friday. And what a week, what a week, what a week. The numbers are in over 80 million people. Over, get this again, over 80 million people. Watch the debate last night between Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. By the way, you like that song? Everyone's asking where they can hear the song. Now, the band is called Fig Hole. It's called Red, White, and Milf, and it's uh, linked at our website, blowmeuptom.com. Go check out their MySpace page. You can listen to the song anytime you like. Just go to blowmeuptom.com. Yes, over 80 million people watched that debate last night. Holy schmagoli, that's outrageous. Who can believe that? Christ. Amazing stuff. Wow. So, uh, in any case, uh, I'm sure you've got some comments about that for wide open telephones today, and I know I have some too, which will be, they'll become obvious as we go. In the meantime, uh, other things that happened on the program this week, there were so many things you can talk about here on wide open telephones. We had that one day in the stock market where we were down 777 points. The country lost $1.2 trillion in market value. All the nation's corporations down after the first run of the bailout plan. Also this week, we talked about Sarah Palin, and I said, come on, she's a moron. She's an idiot. She's a boob. Some people got upset about that, but the truth had to be told. Fortune magazine, once again, with their list of the 50 most powerful women, not a bangable one of the bunch, once again. We talked about whether you are with someone who is constantly spending money on ridiculous stuff. I talked to people who have kids, unlike myself. I talked to people who have kids, and I said, how in the world do you do this? How do you have that constant responsibility pressuring you all the time? They want stuff, they need stuff, they're hungry, they're thirsty, they want to go to McDonald's, they want a toy. How do you do it? Wipe my ass, mommy. Talked about that. We talked about the ladies' night lawsuit. Uh, attorney Roy Hollander was on the program. He's been suing nightclubs for having ladies' night. And um, the latest uh, was a federal judge throwing the uh, suit out of court. We'll see if, uh, if he takes it to the next level. We asked you what you have cut out of your budget because of the lousy economy. We talked about the, whether your friends or family are hitting you up for cash or asking if they can move in with you or asking you to co-sign for loans now that times are tough. And in response to a call we got, we had a woman who called us and said that uh, when she sees black people, she just wants to run up to them and say, what do you think of Obama? I told her that would be racist to be wrong to do that. But since we have a radio show, we could do it on her behalf. And that's what we did. We did an hour of asking black people to call in. And I said to each one, hey, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? So uh, plenty of stuff to chew over. A very busy week. And, of course, your telephone calls. Welcome on Wide Open Telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. This is Casey on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's hey. it going? It's going great. Hey, I, I wanted to comment about that debate last night, man. I mean, Palin, she did a little better than expected, but she's she's not the smartest woman, if you ask me, to be leading the country. Well, she's not the smartest person, for sure. She's far from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, the thing about Sarah Palin, anyone who says she looked good last night, let's just say this. All she had to do was show up and speak English. 
Yeah. And people would say she did better than expected. And she didn't answer almost any of the questions that were put to her. In every case, she even said she was going to do it. I'm just going to talk to the American people directly. You know, it's like, what do you, what do you mean you're going to talk to the American people directly? You're going to evade the question and talk to the American people directly? For real. I she mean, did not answer the questions. End of story. And that's why Joe Biden won the debate. Exactly. And she couldn't wait to talk about how she's a hockey mom. Big deal. Yeah, well, you know, uh, that may be common in Alaska. And I love hockey to every fiber of my being, but uh, I also know that uh, hockey is a niche activity. There's yeah. not a lot of hockey moms in America. A lot of them in Canada, not a lot of them here. All right, can you can you uh, send me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Tom Likas, 1 800 5 800 Tom, 1 800 5 800 866. I'm kind of going through the Tom Likas book of breakups and uh, going out and getting drunk and meeting other girls. And I think I'm doing it the right way this time because uh, once the trash is taken out, you can't recycle it. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones this Friday, the Tom Likas Show. It's Luann. Hello. I'm not waiting for people. If you're not ready, I'm going to the next. Ludwig, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you, man? Doing okay. Oh, great, dude. I'm so glad I got to speak to you. It's urgent that we, uh, we get something on its way, dude. Um, what you, that what is mean? Um, the human grab bag project you spoke about last year. The Human Grab Bag Project is, uh, yes, it's a project that uh, was originated on this program, and it comes up for the holidays, of course. Yes, sir. Okay, so what I was thinking is every guy out there who knows what we're talking about, um, they should grab a chick now, hold on to them for a couple of months, you know, you know, you know, get them chasing a little, and as soon as the holiday comes up, you know, we're talking, you know, Christmas, boom, let them go, you know, and then we'll have... Uh, astronomical numbers of chicks out there. That's right. Wait, wait. Uh, and for people who did not hear the Human Grab Bag Project last year, the uh, project involved every guy listening breaking up with your chick or dumping your chick uh, before Thanksgiving. Oh, that, uh, that, that's like, the one. Thanksgiving. Yes, kind of yes, like, yes. You know, well, Thanksgiving through Christmas, through New Year's, through Valentine's Day, and then kind of like the Secret Santa at your office, the grab bag. Uh, we'll all reach into the grab bag and take somebody else's chick. Hey, what's the big deal? Because this way we all save money. Yeah, Tom, dude, dude, you don't know how freaking genius that was, man. You don't. That still, that still excites me today, man. You know, just just the thought of it. You know, just going out there. You know, like, hey, you know, you broke up with who? And a sad, a sad girl. You know, crying over her last boyfriend, and you taking just complete advantage of her vulnerability, man. It's just genius dude and so so i was saying you know we gotta we gotta start doing this now you know pick a chick if, if, well me i'm a single guy you know so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna you know pick a chick you know see, see one pick one get uh -huh. with her you know hold on to her for a couple months and or oh, actually a month and 24 days from today and then let it go you know well that uh makes a lot of sense to me so we gotta get started Thank you, Tom. You need to tell your, your guys out there, you know, they'll listen to you, you know. And, I you know. pick up a chick now that you can dump for the holidays. William on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Hey, Tom. Hey, listen, that grab bag was a great idea. That's the first time I ever heard that. Oh, yes. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, listen, just to let you know, um, I heard this from a friend. And, you know, I probably should have Googled it myself and probably read the facts on it. But did Sarah Palin know that her child was going to be mentally retarded before giving birth to it? I don't know the answer to that, but what I will tell you is, look, it's, it's, a, it's a known statistical fact that over 40, uh, the odds of a woman giving birth to a child who is mentally retarded or has Down syndrome or what have you increases exponentially. Right. I mean, honestly, it's time to, uh, to, to close for business uh, when you hit 40. You know what I'm saying? 
Oh, definitely, for sure. Well, yeah, I heard that, and I was just thinking, is that why she said that there's going to be so, that every mentally retarded person out there, that there's a special place in the White House? Because she was too dumb to realize that she would have a mental, mental, sorry, Tom, but a mental retarded child at the age of 40? I mean, hey, come on, who doesn't know? What woman doesn't know that having a child over age 40, the chances of him having Down syndrome increase dramatically? Who doesn't know that? I don't know. Well, hey, Tom, it's been a pleasure. Do you think you can take me out, maybe Sarah Palin style with a bong rip? What would that? What would Sarah Palin style be? Sarah Palin style would be where she quotes that the, uh, every mentally challenged person out there has a special place in the White House. No, I, I don't think we have that ready, but uh, we'll look into doing a Sarah Palin style. I think that's a good idea. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Raul. On the Tom Like It Show, wide open telephone, tele. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. Hey, Tom, I have a question for you, sir. It's in regards to the Second Amendment right, because you said you wanted to purchase a firearm, correct? Yes, and that is my plan. Okay, um, I, I can I give you a recommendation? Of a firearm? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be, it, I gotta be honest with you. It wouldn't make any sense to me right now, simply because before I purchase a firearm, I'm going to learn how to use a firearm okay. safely. Well, and and so, uh, but I'm I can't even get into which guns are good or bad because it doesn't make any sense. I uh, none of it means anything to me right now. This is an all new ground for me. Okay, well the thing is, because uh, I there's the uh, let me see there's the LEX gun range. You could check you could check them out right there, and you know you can fire a gun, fire away. You know whatever you like, you pick it. And me personally, I, I recommend you go with the German firearm. Honestly, a six, like a six-hour or something like that. Or a why would I want to, just so I know, because I'm an idiot when it comes to guns, why would I want a German firearm? Because they're very reliable. They're very well-made. Uh, their craftsmanship is very excellent. Honestly, if you look into what the FBI and what the U.S. Marshals carry, they carry either six-hour or Glock, so I would stick with something like that. That'll be very dependable. You get what I mean? I hear what you're saying. Okay, uh, my, my final question is, sir, why would you vote for somebody that is so against firearms, such as Barack Obama? That's one of my questions I have for you. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm not a one-issue candidate. Right, I understand. Okay, uh -huh. there's a number uh -huh. of things I disagree with Barack Obama on. Okay. Uh, and and uh, that would be one of them, by the way. I, I, uh, I'm i a libertarian when it comes to firearms, drugs, right. prostitution, gambling, <laughs> vice, you name it. I'm a, I'm a libertarian. You're a libertarian. Oh, okay. So that means you're just like independent, away from Republican views, and and well, it, that, that's not what it, that's not really what it means. What it really means is that unlike what Republicans say that they're for smaller government and getting the government off your back, I really mean it. Okay. All right. And so, um, you know, and my attitude is if. Uh, yeah, you know the, the same reasons why uh, drugs are illegal. They should be legal, and guns should be legal I mean, because you, you, all you do when you ban this stuff is you make it more expensive. Well, and that's more true because the, the reason, like for example, in California, there's a so-called assault weapons ban, and, and you know Bush lifted the assault weapons ban, and Barack is in favor of reinstating a so-called assault weapons ban. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, all you do when you make uh, weapons illegal is you make them more expensive and you increase the likelihood that someone's going to hit you over the head and take your wallet or break into your house uh, so they can get enough money to buy the more expensive firearms. It it just doesn't make any sense to me. Right, right. Because, you know, you could also look at the Washington Post. I'm not just talking out of my, you know, my head. You know, you can look at right. the Washington Post and, he, and the facts right there. And you could also look at the NSF National Shooting Sport Foundation, and they have that also there. What he, what he also supports. Right. That's but I, I, I am not going to vote for somebody who supported Charlie Keating during the savings and loan scandal of the 80s. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that either either one of them. I mean, I, I actually well, think... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about my level of enthusiasm for a candidate. The, the, my reason for enthusiasm about Barack Obama is that he's super intelligent. Absolutely. You know, I, 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 I don't personally like the guy, but I like he, he's very well spoken. He's down to earth when he talks about, you know, the people and all that. But then you, you kind of you kind of wonder, well, are you going to empower the criminal or are you going to empower the criminal by stripping him by permit to carry? But again, it's stuff? one issue. Right, right. It's do I really do yeah. I really want more bankruptcies, more foreclosures? More banks taking our money. Do I want more of that? No, no. absolutely not. That's more important than than Barack Obama trying to uh, reinstate a firearms law. 
Okay? It's more important. What's in my pocket is more important. That's very true. That's very true because this country is in my opinion, it's the best, greatest country in the world, and we can do it. We can get out of this situation, but we need to wisely elect these, these individuals who can help us and at the same time correct our economical situation because it's going down the toilet. But uh, correcting the economic situation is the number one uh, component. Uh, for me, everything else falls way short. And, and John McCain said it himself. He knows nothing about economics. He graduated near the bottom of his class at the Naval Academy. This is not what we need. We need somebody with a brain in there. Well, you know what? Uh, actually, you know, if you hear uh, McCain speak, he sounds like Dr. Ron. You know, you ever notice that? Well, that's my point. So you ask why I'm supporting Obama? You have your answer there. Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jay. Hey, what's up with them Dodgers? We need to get the broomstick and the dust pan out tomorrow, baby. Well, the Dodgers have been just amazing, and the Cubs are uh, doing the old Folder Rooney again. Again. Four errors last night. Did you see that? Four. Yeah, yeah they, they looked good. Dang, it looked like they are on something. I, I, I was blown away. Up. I was blown away. And and you know what? The, the Angels going down without a whimper again against the Red Sox? Who would have thought? Yeah, no. The Dodgers are up two games to none, and the Angels are down one game to none. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Hey, Tom, what's up? Uh, we need to get taken out Dodger style. Maybe, you know, Kirk Gibson, 87, or something. we got to get uh, Vinny in there, you know, get taken out Dodger style. All right, we'll figure something out there, Jay. All right, say what's up to all my boys out there in Bassett, California. All right, yeah, I think you just did that, and I thank you for the call at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Chauncey on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's okay. Fantastic. So a couple of things. I'm really getting sick of the whole Maverick thing. So I'm hoping Sarah maybe says John's an ace man or a goose. I'm kind of getting sick of the Maverick thing. You know what I mean? Well, if I hear the word Maverick again, I think I'm going to blow my own brains out. <laughs> and uh, my wife noticed this last night uh, during the debate. She, uh, Sarah goes, John McCain tapped me. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I noticed that, too. I was uh, curious as to when and where. Yeah, he tapped her. Fantastic. I, yeah, who else tapped her? For God's sake. Uh, by the way, I, I, there was one point, I swear I heard her say this. She was She was being asked about John McCain. And her response was, well, you know, John McCain, you know, being a maverick, taking shots from everybody for being a maverick. I mean, she has no idea what this guy has done. She has no idea what his history is. No, well, and she, she also made a horrible mistake last night. John McCain knows how to win a war. First of all, we lost the Vietnam War. You know, I thank him for what he did for our country. I, I respect all of the Vietnam right. veterans. I think that's a great thing. But we didn't win that war, and we haven't won Iraq, Iraq yet. He, uh, yeah, John McCain hasn't won a war yet. So that, that's a big mistake that she said there. And uh, lastly, she did look good in the high heels, though. i got to give her that. that. Nice ass, I'll tell you what. But you know what I noticed in HD last night? Turkey neck, 8 million freckles. <laughs> Did you notice that? If you watch it HD, uh, that that skin above the cleavage, not looking good. And if she says her husband's name one more time, I'm going to go into the TV and punch her. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take me out African tribal style with uh, with an orgasm at the end for Priscilla? I certainly can. <laughs> I think there was supposed to be an orgasm at the end there or oh. something. Oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's more like it. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones here. It's Jason in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Jason. What's up, Tom? <laughs> Just doing a radio show here. Uh, you know what? I have a, about as black and white a question as you can get. Now, here's the deal. I'm 32, and believe it or not, I've never voted in my entire life. And the reason why I've never voted is because usually politics have bugged me so bad because people get so wrapped up in what they believe, and it's usually pretty narrow-minded in what, you know, I mean, either you're an Obama guy or you're, you're old on McCain. And it usually seems like that if you try to have an open discussion that you're, gonna, you're never going to talk the other person out of it. 
So I still don't know who I want to vote for. The thing I wanted to, that I was curious about is last night watching the uh, debate, which is also a first time for me, I thought it was interesting that Biden never looked at the camera. And as soon as it got over to Palin, she looked directly into the camera like she was talking to the American public. Right. I'm wondering if that was pre, uh, pre-planned. Like if you of thought, course you know, it was. Of yeah. course it was. You know, she was in intense rehearsal for that debate for over a week. Uh, that was what the handlers told her to do, and she did it. My question was, and this is, like, again, about as black and white as you can get, is how would one, like myself, who really hasn't decided who to vote for yet, I mean, what's that one thing that people haven't decided for? What do they look for to make their decision? Because I liked Obama in the beginning. Uh, he did a rally here in Portland, and it was the biggest rock concert I've ever been to. It was gigantic. It was enormous. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, with the whole Palin thing, and then it's almost like the rock star status is on that side now. It's really weird how it's become more of a celebrity thing this time around. A celebrity thing? In what way? It seems to me like at first, I mean, I don't, remember, I don't know if I read this in the wrong place, but it seems to me like, I don't know where I heard or read this, is that, you know, Barack Obama was the biggest uh, rock star. What was that ad? Wasn't there an ad that Barack Obama's the biggest rock star, and then they showed all these shots like Britney Spears? And, was that yeah, that was, John McCain, that was a John McCain ad, yes. Yeah, okay. So well, then now it seems like, I mean, Sarah Palin is like, everybody talks to her, everybody wants to see her. What did you say, 80 million people watched the debate last 80 night? million people, that's right. I'm wondering if it was a normal, just a dude that maybe no one's ever heard of, that the other guy running with uh, McCain... Do you think 80 million people would have tuned in to see two guys debate for vice presidency? Or do you think that that Palin has blown up so big so fast and people want to see what happens, that that's why there were so many viewers last night? Well, I, I think uh, it is clearly uh, everybody's fascination with wanting to see a car wreck. I think right. everybody wanted to see if she would... Uh, blow up and really all she did was got away with not answering any questions she was not confronted really at all by anybody for not answering the questions and uh, so she gave the appearance of not making any major mistakes no gaffes nothing like that but i do think that's why people tuned in come on do right. you think do you think 80 million people uh, care in this country about politics do you really think that yeah, no, I, that's, a, that's kind of my, my point, is I'm having a hard time deciding who to actually vote for. I want to make the right vote, and it seems like more than ever in this election, it's gotten away from, it just seems more like a huge celebrity battle. Yeah, but don't me, worry, but, don't worry about that stuff. Worry about who is the most qualified and competent. Don't worry about the other stuff. Right. Just don't worry about it. God, with that being said, then, again, I mean, how do you... Uh, who's, got I, the, who's got the biggest brain? Uh, by the top of my head, I would say Obama. Done. That's how you decide. Done. <laughs> hey, Tom, uh, I've only been a listener for about three, four months. Uh, I actually truly do appreciate your show. Uh, enjoy it greatly. And uh, if there's any creative way to take me out since I'm a new listener, hit me, baby! Well, anytime you uh, give me a blank check, you know what I'm going to use. Sound like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. A fat girl's kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood in 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, sir. I have a question for you. Yeah. Hey, uh, I was thinking about getting a divorce simply because the divorce rate is over 50%. So nothing's really bad at home. You know, my wife's hot. You know, she's she's not a horrible person. I got a kid. But just simply because that the chances are I will get a divorce by the end of my, you know, life. Well, well, uh, based on that thinking, why get married in the first place? Well, I'm already married. That's the why. Why? Yeah, but I see her on the screen. You've been married only four years. Why did you do it? Um, well, uh, we've, we've known each other for 12 years. Obviously, my son's 10. 
And, uh, you know, I was, I was a man whore for, you know, eight of those years or up to I got married. I don't know. I just, it kind of just rolled into it, I guess. No, no, you, you didn't. That, that was a, that was a plan you had. It was a plan Why? that I had? Yeah. Why did you do it? You didn't just roll into it. You had to go down and get a marriage license. You had to be fitted for a tuxedo. You had to rent a place to hold the wedding. Well, I, I guess it was a decision. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was the right thing. Why at that don't you time. take responsibility when you when you f up? I almost said the word. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I am taking responsibility. I'm married. No, you're I not. Just... You're saying it kind of happened to you. You know, like you got caught in the rain or something. Right. No, it, that's not what happened. You did it. Right. Why did you do it? I, I I guess I don't know then. I mean, no, yet I'm not accepting that for an answer. You did it for a reason. I want to know the reason. Maybe to shut her up, or uh, you know that to I'll... shut her up. <laughs> you could have just said no. Yeah, I guess you're right. You could have just said, "Look, I'll just uh, be involved with the kid, but uh, there's no more relationship here." You could have done that. Okay, well, but you, you had about... no. What you had? We'll get to that. You had no balls at all. I could None. Do yep. Did you? Uh, no. I didn't have the balls. And so you got married, which is a big involved thing. You right. didn't even want to be married. Well, I guess I guess I kind of did at that point, but I'm looking, you know, so now that I'm in... What do you mean, wait, 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 what do you mean you kind of did at that point? Well, at that point, you know... When it, when it came to, you know, what, what, you know, it's the, uh, you know, go or get off the pot situation where it was the right move at that time. I felt that it was. But, 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 but for what reason? You'd already had, your kid was eight years old already. What, why was, at that moment, was that a good idea? I um, can't give you the straight answer, I guess. Well, how could you do something so big in your life and not even know the answer to that question? Uh,. Were you drunk? Were you strung out on heroin? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I mean, how can you not know the answer to that question? You uh, ask me about any of my four marriages, I can tell you in each case, each case. Exactly why you got married? Yes. Why can't you tell me? I, I don't know, I guess. Because, because I mean, you're not taking responsibility for what you did. Right, and now now that I'm in it, I see all the reasons why I should not have done so. Yes, but until we analyze why you got married, it's very hard to help you. I guess. Well, I guess my question was, you know, getting the divorce just because it's inevitable or it's, you know, 50, 50 shot that I will get divorced anyways. I I don't agree with that as a reason. And, and again, your whole life, you you have no commitment to anything. I mean, even in this case, you can't take responsibility. You can't say to me... I'm not happy, so I'll get a divorce. You instead blame it on the statistics. Right. Are you ever responsible for a decision you make? Well, I'm responsible in my career. No, no. For a decision you make about yourself. Uh... You got married for no reason. And now you really have no emotional reason for getting a divorce. You're just looking at statistics. Maybe I'm just looking for an excuse. I don't know. Jesus Christ. That's your whole life. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, it seems so simple to start talking to you and you know, and listening to you every day. And then, it, you know, listening to you puts doubts in my head that, you know, this is where I want to be. And well, if you're not people. happy in your marriage, then you should get a divorce. No doubt about it. But I, you know, the thing is, you let her, uh, and by the way, I know you're in one of America's most pussified cities, Portland, Oregon, where the yep. men are pussies. And um, so there you are. You, you kowtowed to her and got married to her, even though you didn't particularly want to. And by the way, you're not particularly in love with this woman either. And so now, four years later, you hear about all the fun I'm having and my boys are having. So now you've decided you want to join, you want to join our side. I mean, look, if you're not happy, get a divorce. But, pal, start owning up. Start taking responsibility for the things you do. You know what? I've screwed up a lot. A lot. And you know why I get over it? And do you know how I have made my life better? I own it. I own it. 
when I make a mistake, when I do something stupid, I take responsibility for it. Right. That's great advice. You don't. The last relationship I had where a woman lived at my house, it was one of the biggest mistakes of my life. One of the biggest. It just so happened at the time I'd gotten out of another relationship, idiot that I was, and I missed that person. And so I jumped in with this person, and it was stupid. It was stupid. And it was all because I think I was feeling sorry for myself. And so I went and got myself into another relationship. Stupid. So when I fixed it, I fixed it for good. I didn't jump into another relationship. I didn't ask anyone to live with me. I lived alone and love it. That's what I want to do. But you see, you can't fix it until you take responsibility for the stupid things you do. Of course. Because the likelihood is you'll do it again. I, I will never get married again. There's no, no reason. You'll be another one of those who calls me. Well, Tom, I wasn't going to get married again, but this one's the one. She's different. She's the exception no. to the rule. Like those other morons who called in here. No, BS. I'll never get married again. Believe it when I see it. All right, sir. Can you take me out old school? Yes. Yes, I can. Our email address is my name. Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or visit our website. It's BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.